Hello, and in this video I'm going to be uh, talking about the Nintendo Family Computer, or Famicom, and how it compares with the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. If you don't already know the story, the Famicom was what the Japanese had instead of the NES in Japan. The Family Computer was released in 1983 in the middle of the early 80s video game crash. Because of that, Nintendo redesigned the system before releasing it in North America in 1985. The first major difference you can tell is the sheer size of it. It's practically twice as small. In the Nintendo Entertainment System, it's actually kind of funny how much empty space they managed to fit into the system. I mean, there's a good, you know, inch here, or a couple inches here, and then another uh, inch down below the motherboard. Um, compare that to this, it's, it's pretty astonishing. Second thing you might notice is the controllers. The controllers on the system are hardwired into the back end of the console, and they're only about, you know, two and a half feet long. It's not very long. You practically have to be sitting on the console in order to play it. Uh, that, that's hilarious if you compare the ridiculously long NES controller, which is, uh, where did I put it? Ah, it's about eight feet long. <laughs> It's, uh, it's pretty unbelievable, really. Since the controllers could not be removed to insert other peripherals, they opted for a serial port found in the front. There's a little plastic cover there, and inside there's little pins that you connect your uh, ex accessory to, such as a light gun or third-party control stick. One thing they did that was kind of neat, as you can see, is they left little slots that you can just kind of put the controller down into so that you don't lose them or they don't get tangled up. The controller itself, uh, other than the beveled edges, feels almost the same as the uh, NES controller. Um, I mean, it's got different molding here around, you know, this golden color and it's red, but uh, other than that, it's about the same. Um, you know, it's got rubber start and select buttons, plastic A and B buttons. Um, the D-pad feels identical. Um, there's not really much to say about the controller other than that it's red and cool looking. From what I understand, I guess the earliest version of the family computer actually had uh, rubber A and B buttons, similar to how they use rubber buttons on the start and select. Uh, and they're also square, funny enough. They weren't uh, round or circle, circular. Um, those are at a very high premium online these days because of the rarity. They didn't make very many of them. And it was also the first model. Um, and of course, you know, eventually they, they added the, you know, the traditional circular plastic buttons, uh, which we all know and love, which I'm glad they did, because I'd imagine, I haven't actually felt the original rubber button version, but I'd imagine it wouldn't hold up as well, especially when you have to, you know, rapidly tap those buttons, and, you know, that, and, uh, you know, they, they might be able to pop off or tear. More. Other than the appearance, uh, there's a few differences between the NES controllers and the Famicom controllers. As you can see, the Player 1 controller is the only controller to have start and select. On Player 2 controller, there's a microphone with a volume slider for the said microphone. It's actually kind of funny. At any point during the game, if you have the volume switch turned on for the microphone, you can just start yelling into the controller and it actually feeds the audio straight to your TV speakers. One major design difference is the fact that the Famicom is actually a top loader. This is a little flap that exposes the uh, cartridge slot. And you just pop your game in there, and, um, and away you go. Now we'll go over the, uh, the control deck. You got a power switch, which uh, doesn't illuminate. It just has a uh, bright orange you know, strip of paint on there. Of course, you have the reset button to reset the console. And here there is a very loud and squeaky eject 
uh, s switch or lever. I'll attempt it right now. Here's uh, the Japanese release of uh, Super Mario Bros. Um, as you can tell, the cartridges are about half the size. I put it in. It goes in nice and snug and firm. And uh, then you just pull up and pops it out. On the back of the console, you have the two uh, controllers, and then you have the AC adapter. You have a TV and game switch, which I don't even know what it does, to be honest. I just leave it on game. And then, of course, you have your channel 1, channel 2 uh, switch. And, of course, you have the RF switch output. Here's the uh, RF switch. Um, I think the first thing you'll notice is how adorable it is. Um, as you can see, it's like it kind of mocks the original console. It has a little fake... Uh, you know, ejection switch and power switch and everything. It's pretty cute. Um, on the end, it actually has the old school antenna uh, prongs here. Um, I haven't seen a TV that uses this in a long time. But of course, it also has um, a little adapter for coaxial, so you can go ahead and plug that into your television. Luckily enough, the Famicom is actually compatible with the uh, NES RF switch, so you don't have to worry about this funky thing. Here I am playing um, the original Super Mario Brothers on the Famicom. Uh, one important thing to remember um, when you're importing the uh, Famicom <clears throat> is the fact that it uses different channels. Although on the back, um, the RF switch says that you know it uses channel one and two. Um, that just simply isn't true over here in the United States. In Japan, the NTSC uh, uh, frequencies are a bit different for the channels, where uh, their channel two is our channel 95. So. When you're plugging in your Famicom to a television, you got to make sure that your television uh, can actually go up that high. Because I know some of the older uh, televisions out there, like especially ones with dials and stuff, uh, don't allow you to go that high. So uh, that's just one important thing to remember. The one thing that's missing from the Famicom is the uh, audio video RCA uh, connectors or ports. Uh, they uh, did not have that, which is unfortunate. Uh, luckily enough though, there are mods available for the Famicom uh, motherboard to support uh, RCA uh, adaption. Uh, for me, I, uh, I, there's no modifications in my system at all. I prefer uh, original over uh, you know modern uh, modifications uh, and anything like that. The last and probably most important thing to remember when importing a Famicom is to use the original uh, Famicom uh, AC adapter. Apparently the, uh, the NES adapter outputs at a higher amperage and so supposedly you'll uh, melt your motherboard. I haven't tried it myself because I don't feel like wasting a perfectly good Famicom. But uh, just keep that in mind. You're going to either have to get a transformer of some kind to uh, convert the amperage to an appropriate level, or you could just use the uh, you know, the Japanese uh, version. Uh, and from what I've seen so far, there's zero issues using the Japanese AC adapter on the American uh, you know, power grid. Um, I've heard of other people also not having any issue. I haven't run into any issue so far. Um, it's fairly safe from what I gather, so go ahead and, if you can, pick up one of these. Not only was the Famicom itself unique to Japan, they also had a uh, Japan-only attachment for the Famicom, or add-on, I should say, uh, known as the disk system. Uh, it basically allowed you to play proprietary uh, floppy disks on the console. I guess a good portion of their library uh, was on the disk system just because um, 
they were cheaper to manufacture. Famicom's a great little console um, for collectors. However, for the typical person, uh, I wouldn't recommend it just because of A, the price, and uh, it's not very practical and that the a lot of the cables are shorter. Not only are the controllers, uh, you know, hardwired in, they're short. Even the uh, power cable is actually a little bit shorter as well. It's like everything's shortened down for smaller Japanese apartments or something. Um, so only if you're a really hardcore collector can I really recommend uh, purchasing one of these. Quite an interesting departure from the slot-loading uh, 